It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. The Federal Reserve Chair Janet Yellen will end her term in office in February 2018. This week, as a part of her semi-annual report to Congress, she appeared before the Congressional Committee on Financial Services. In the hearing, Yellen did dodge a question of whether she would accept a second term in office if President Donald Trump decide to reappoint her. In terms of her report, the discussion focused focused on economic policy, especially on monetary policy, on inflation, interest, and debt. Yellen gave an opening statement without mentioning the word debt even once. She proceeded to emphasize her plan for a gradual hike in the interest rate and that she expects a slowdown in the inflation rate itself. On to talk about this with me is Professor Gerald Epstein. He is the co-director of the Political Economy Research Institute at UMass Amherst, where he's also a professor of economics. Jerry, good to have you back with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Jerry, uh, Janet Yellen was appointed uh, chairwoman by federal, of the Federal Reserve by President Obama to replace Ben Bernanke. Now, unlike other previous chairpeople, she didn't come from the management uh, of corporate banking, but rather as a person from the academia with a background in the Federal Reserve itself, where she held uh, several appointments. Now, is there... Uh, um, uh, a possibility that she would be reappointed, or is it unlikely that Trump will reappoint her? Well, most people, including myself, think it's pretty unlikely that Trump will reappoint her, even though it is the norm for uh, incoming presidents uh, to reappoint the current chair. Uh, the, the last time that the, the president did not do that was in 1979. Uh, but of course, uh, Trump doesn't obey these norms. And uh, most people think that he's going to want to appoint somebody who is much less uh, tough on financial regulation, though he probably uh, doesn't mind uh, Yellen's approach towards setting interest rates. So I think in this discussion about the monetary policy and the role of the Fed and the reappointments, it's really important to distinguish between these two aspects of the Federal Reserve. On the one hand, setting interest rates, and on the other hand, uh, regulating the financial markets. Right. And, uh, Jerry, she even uh, didn't want to talk about debt very much. She even denied the fact that uh, the Fed has been considering purchasing student debt, for example. Uh, and she didn't mention household debt in the U.S. I understand it has skyrocketed. Does the Federal Reserve have this under control in terms of debt in our country and, of course, household debt as well? Uh, well, I think the, the Federal Reserve, especially under Janet Yellen, is very concerned about there being uh, excessive debt, excessive leverage. Uh, but um, uh, I think that on, on, they're sort of between a rock and a hard place. On the one hand, the way that they can, under using their normal tools, get the economy going is by keeping interest rates low, getting people to borrow more. Uh, that raises the amount of borrowing and the amount of debt. Their hope, of course, is that that will get the economy to grow uh, more rapidly so that if uh, the economy grows rapidly, then even though debt goes up, the economy is growing. So the ratio of debt to the size of the economy is not necessarily going up. Uh, but um, uh, the, the problem, of course, is that the Federal Reserve isn't using other tools that it might have at, at its disposal. Uh, to get the economy going directly. For example, uh, the Fed Up campaign, which is a, a progressive campaign, has been trying to get the Federal Reserve to buy student debt, to lower student debt, uh, to uh, lend money to cities and, and uh, municipalities to increase the infrastructure growth and so forth, and they haven't been willing to do any of that. So they've been sticking mostly to fairly standard tools of monetary policy, uh, buying government securities, and the, and the like. Um, but let me get back to this issue of, of Trump and who he's likely to appoint. Uh, it's clear that uh, uh, from what everything that Trump has been doing, uh, they're trying to 
reduce, eliminate the possibility of the Federal Reserve and other regulatory agencies from regulating Wall Street. They want to give Wall Street a, a free hand to do whatever they want. And Trump is very firmly uh, in this camp. And he wouldn't like to reappoint Janet Yellen because she's been pretty strong on financial regulation. So he's very likely uh, to want to, re to appoint somebody who's going to uh, support financial deregulation. And there are a number of candidates out there who uh, are likely to want to do that. Jerry, a quick look at the graph of recent inflation rates in the U.S. seemed to fly in the face of uh, what Janet Yellen was saying in terms of inflation slowing down. What justification would she have to claim that inflation is actually slowing down, uh, and is it? Well, she wants inflation to rise, uh, as, as many economists and other people do, because it's too it, in some ways, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's too low. The Federal Reserve and other central banks over the years have been kind of obsessed with keeping inflation low. They have a 2% target, but inflation is running below 2%. I think most economists think that um, in low inflation, which are now at about 1.4%, 1.6% a year, uh, is a sign of weakness in the economy. And so uh, economists at the Economic Policy Institute, other progressive economists have suggested that the Federal Reserve should not be raising interest rates as long as there's so much weakness in the economy. It's true that the formal unemployment rate is relatively low, but it's, what's also true is that there's been very little wage growth in the economy. And so uh, if the Federal Reserve continues to, to raise interest rates despite the, the lack of bargaining power on the part of workers, um, that's going to keep uh, this monstrously unequal income distribution uh, from being being corrected. Uh, so Janet Yellen um, has been under enormous pressure to raise interest rates for a long time now, uh, partly by investors uh, at banks that want higher interest rates, uh, partly by uh, conservative Republicans and others who want higher interest rates. So she's been trying to actually resist the pressure to raise interest rates. Uh, but uh, uh, she's been doing it as slowly as she possibly can. Uh, but as the unemployment rate keeps going down, the pressure is going to keep building. So um, she probably uh, will continue modest increases in, in interest rates. So, Jerry, we are close to Janet Yellen's end of her term. How would you rate her policies with the Federal Reserve, especially considering the impact on inequality in the United States? Well, uh, as you said at the beginning, uh, she doesn't come from, from Wall Street. She doesn't come from the financial markets, as uh, many of the former Federal Reserve chairs have come. Uh, she, has, she comes at this from a perspective of really trying to fulfill uh, the dual mandate of the Federal Reserve, um, to uh, keep in stable prices and to maintain full employment. And she's taken this full employment uh, mandate very seriously, much more, I'd say, than many of the other chairs of the Federal Reserve. She's also introduced other topics into um, the discourse that other Federal Reserve chairs have not at all, namely uh, income in and wealth inequality and also gender uh, equality as well. She gave a speech uh, recently on that. So in, in that sense, she's uh, been a, a breath of fresh air as chair of the Federal Reserve and I think has navigated uh, this very strong pressure for traditional Federal Reserve policy, raising interest rates, etc. I think she's navigated that very well. On the other hand, um, she's been relatively unwilling uh, to go uh, well beyond uh, what, what um, traditional policy has been in terms of undertaking some of these other kinds of, of policies that I've suggested, uh, but uh, she has relatively she has had relatively few degrees of, of freedom to, to do that. So I, I would say overall, um, uh, including trying to maintain financial regulation, Janet Yellen has done quite a good job, and it would be uh, too bad I think if uh, Trump did not reappoint her. All right, Jerry, I thank you so much for joining us today and uh, look forward to doing a proper assessment of uh, Janet Yellen's uh, record in the uh, Fed. I thank you. Okay, thank you.
And thank you for joining us here on The Real News Network.